Okay, we're going to go over mud fossil bones. And the first thing I want to show you here is a, a fingertip. Um, there was DNA tested and it's human DNA. It's gigantic, but it's human DNA. Now, if you see this black area here, you see that black stain and the pattern of it? And you see the vein hole and the artery hole at the bottom and the arteries blown out over here. And then also at the tip and the vein side is not blown out. They're still plugged and uh, that's where the tendons lock in over here. Now, um, that is this tip right here. Okay, now if you can see it, um, you have to look pretty close here. But it's the same articulation as the tip that we're looking at. Now, the other part is, is right here. If you look at the anatomy, and it might be a little fuzzy looking here, but the anatomy of the bottom of that fingertip. And I'm going to show you another one over here. Hold on. It's going to get a little wavy here. Okay, here we go. Now, over here is what I am telling you is the pattern we're going to see this pattern right here and that tip is what's called the apical tuft now this is the pattern um, hopefully you'll be able to see it uh, let me come down here that's the pattern of the bone that's inside this mud finger tip now the reason you see that black is is the same as this right here it's from um, the iron oxides that are in metal, which is in the blood. And the blood ha stains, they call it uh, carbon silhouetting. Uh, as you can see, it's the exact same silhouette as the patterns of the, of the fibers of the steel. And they, they leach, and they create that pattern. And that is the pattern that we saw here, that black stain is the fingertip and uh, uh, inside that bone. Now, that bone at the very end, I showed you that apical tuft. Once again, the very tip of fingers have this apical tuft. Now this one here is completely eroded away, but that is what's on the tip of a finger. And that would be literally, and it still is inside here, there. Now, in addition, I have a larger ones. Well, I have some from the same hand that that came from, and I have the palm to that hand, and I have a bone here, hold on a second, which is the knuckle. And this is it right here. Let's bring the camera down here. That right there is the knuckle and what you're looking at right here is is the bone ball and this is the tendon that, that comes down and wraps around it now it actually has the muscle fibers right there if I can see those hopefully you can see those all right and they are right here fully articulated See? Those are the fibers of the muscle that wraps around this part of the ball. And this is the other side of the ball. Now, those fibers wrap around, as I showed you. Hopefully you can see this. Now, there's a, a piece that comes down here, this way. And that is what we see over here is where the bone ball is is right under there that's the knuckle and that piece that comes off is the tendon assembly and it breaks right where it transitions into the meat and they all do this that's the way tendons break this is what they call an abrupt transition and they, they just snap off and, and you can see it here on this one 
that's the tendon and that is this piece right here and they snap off and that is the muscle fiber and that's the muscle fiber that wraps underneath and around the bone and that is the bone ball from this same fingertip that I just showed you a second ago and I have a larger one that's more intact that was cat scan and, and is quite obviously human now this one is also from the same uh, spot where the other fingertips came from this one has been cat scanned and uh, this is a left thumb it's the same as this right here and the fingernail bed is in here the apical tuft which is the same as this right here is in there and it's easily seen in the cat scan the triangular investment on the sides where the ligaments attach you see the little triangles they're fully intact this is what's called areolar tissue with the little holes in it areolar means holes these are the pads on the bottom of your thumb the same exact same thing if you feel them those are the pads and uh, in the um, microscope you can see it's got the same fascia coating it's all the same as the uh, as all of these mud fossils and and uh, the bone structures inside you can see the bone perfectly well in a cat scan now those are some big ones and they they come in all sizes just like uh, tiny to huge and they were um, several of them were um, DNA tested and they all tested human one of them was a lung, one of them was this fingertip right here, which I believe is in the same area. They eroded differently because uh, one of its par partially was out of the... They, they erode differently. You know, these are pretty big things and they don't necessarily erode the same on the one finger as the other. And, and this was 36 inches wide, this particular palm, and I did do have the palm it's been outside for years and it's getting quite deteriorated but it's still you know not pretty obvious what it, well I, I have all the uh, videos of it as well anyway okay I, I'm, I'm using doing this under the Fair Use Act I'm using other people's information uh, but I, I, this is not for profit and uh, and and therefore uh, it's accepted now uh, this is from a place called uh, pubs.rsc.org quantitative analysis of sedimentary, sedimentary rocks and I'm going to go to um, this pick I have here hold on one second all right now to understand mud fossils and the preservation um, of soft tissues in wet wet conditions you have to understand a little bit of chemistry and a little bit of anatomy and so forth now let's take the anatomy when you have a, a, a creature it's coated by skin the skin is dense with silicon it's 50 times denser in the skin than it is in in the rest of the tissues of the body so that means that the skin is coated literally with silicon SI now silicon in the matrix of the body is 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 in its elementary state of silicon and it's more or less floating around as that tough stuff now when it becomes no longer protected by the matrix of the body and so forth it is exposed to the elements in this cold wet environment and mud and so forth and the oxygen bonds with the silicon and you get SiO2 which is sand SiO2 is silicon dioxide and that's what happens and then that sand which is the skin erodes away and you end up with mudstone so you start with sand and that erodes away and you end up with mudstone and limestone mudstone is the fleshy tissues and it can also be the uh, uh, tendons, but primarily it's the fleshy tissues. And then the limestone is the um, uh, uh, calcified tissues, the, the um, connective tissues and bones and uh, uh, um, uh, the, the mineral 
more more mineral so and when you look at the patterns of the elements it's it's, it's extremely obvious so what happens to the sandstone it, it the it starts out with a similar sort of effect here but once you go to into your red which is the silicon si sand is is dense with it look at how all the silicon now the, it's all eroded away when you get to the mudstone and the limestone is less of it limestone has a little more of the silicates because it, it that's primarily uh, it, it is invested with silicates to do the job of tendons and so forth. Now, then you move up into the next set of, of elements. And you can see they're, they all, they're the same. They're virtually the same, but the silicon is so much here. And then, of course, you get up to the silicon again, and it's very dense in the sand and less as you go up to here. The patterns are just so completely obvious. Now, once you get past that and you get into the calcium, this is the one, the one that tells the tale. There's literally none in sandstone. That's because that is where all the connective tissue is and all of the bones and all of that is here. And you can see mudstone and limestone has a, well, virtually the same amount. Then you get again as you go up and you get into the calcium again, heavy in the limestone and mudstones. And, and less in the uh, uh, sandstones, which because it's already, it's, 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 it isn't there, it's just skin that's eroded. And then you see a similar pattern of elements that are, are um, the aluminum and the, uh, so forth. It, it's, it's, it's quite obvious that the sand is the skin, which is SI, in your skin is 50 times as dense in your skin. That bonds with the oxygen, it forms SiO2, which makes these little tiny pellets and they, they calve off, and they, they, they break off, and they turn into um, sedimentary sandstones, which are the, 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 we all know what a sandstone is. It runs off of big hills, and they run into uh, layers on the ground. Totally different than mudstone, and totally different than limestone. And I'm going to show you the mudstone and the limestone right now. All right, I showed you the chemistry between the um, mud rock and the uh, limestone and the sandstone. Well, sandstone, we all know what sand is, so I'm not going to bother with that. But this is, is mud rock. And I showed this in some other videos and maybe even earlier in this one. But that's the bone stain pattern. They call it the carbon silhouette, which is really ferrous oxides, black ferrous oxides, I believe. And then the vein and the artery show up here. And they blow out, and they blow out on the artery side, but not the vein side. And they're clamped off here. Shows all the patterns. Mud rocks, this is what they do. Now this is um, another mud, mud rock that is actually muscle tissue from a bone ball. That's the bone ball right there. And of course this side's completely eroded off. And this side here has the actual muscle fiber. You can see the actual muscles wrapped around that bone ball. And this is the other side of it. And this is the tendon that comes down and breaks off when it transitions into the meat. Now, that's mud rock. Now, this is a bone it's also mud rock now, but it's fully articulated, and all of the uh, fa uh, the fascia, the periosteum, the uh, where the Sharpie's fibers invest, and the ligaments, and the bone, everything. But the bone is still has just the tiniest bit of of bone matter left to it, but that will change as well as if it stayed in the ground long. And it's uh, it's fully articulated, and uh, it's a bone and broke off there. Now, those are mud rocks. Now, now we'll go to limestone. This right here is, is what they would consider limestone, basalt, you know, they come up with all kinds of names. Uh, volcanic this and that. It's not. This is a, a fractured bone, and that is the interior of the bone. There's still the tiniest little bit left. Alright? Now, I'll show you, this is wet, that's why it has that, but it would turn white, it turns pretty white. Now, 
this is again the fascia periosteum whatever you want to call it on the bone and it has the mineralization pattern and it has all of the same stuff that all of the uh, fascia has and I will show this in the microscope this is completely obvious this is also would be considered in the limestone area and that is not limestone at all that is a giant finger of some sort and um, I have a video about this and that's the pattern of the tendon and this is the holes that invest with the blood and down inside here that cavity that's where blood leaked out and, and it causes this coloration same down here as a, at the bottom of the tip of the bone and that would have continued over and this side here was where all of the the ligaments invested quite heavy it holds the bone and articulates the bone that one's cut off but that's the style it would lock in there and that is what causes the bone to move around but this would be considered limestone and it's not limestone at all uh, and I will show this under the microscope all right here's that uh, that piece of um, I believe it's a piece of, well I know it's a piece of bone and uh, I'll show this in the microscope hold on one second all right There's the, the, there's the classic fascia. That's fascia. Now you see, this is on the outside of that bone. And this is, they have these bone foramen, or foramen they call them. And inside, you see the little holes there? That's where the blood services the bone. Now, that's the outside of this. Now, the inside, what happens on the inside of bone you get this it's similar but the outside has that fascia much more now this is is the porosity of a bone and all of these holes allow the blood to service what's necessary now there's one little spot here that still maintains some of the actual calcium part of the bone. This is deep inside and there might be a little red blood here and there or black blood, you know, whatever. It's, but you can see some of the bone is still there. Now as I come away from that spot I'm going to come out and out and out. You see it's still some bone, still some bone and now it's going to start to show up less and less bone and into now it's gone to what is normally called source rock transition rock whatever you want to call it and it's already uh, a turn into um, minerals and getting ready to uh, turn into you know fossil fuel see it? that's what happens to these kind of bones so now this would be considered um, limestone really but it's obviously not limestone now then I have this big one and this is real heavy so give me a second This one here, same thing. There's that characteristic um, fascia look, which is what is the reason why all these things separate out on this fascia plane. Now, at different places are going to look different, and then these. This also has the same bone formings and all that. Now, this is a is a, one of these deep cavities, and you can see down inside there. This is, it's a, it's bone, it's, it's bone down in there. Now, 
You see it? And the red and the black, the, the orange and the black. That's the ferrous 2 and ferrous 3. 2 ox. Now, see here? This is where the blood has like bleached out a section and it looks almost like limestone. But if you look carefully, you can see. Whoops. Just turned up the light. You can see it's it's got all the same stuff. Now, if you look over here too, hold on one second. All right, this is from another sample that I have. I, I have a lot of different um, rocks that I've hundreds and hundreds of photos. So anyway, the, this one here is of a um, of one that's transitioned down. Whoops to where it's it's got the fabric in there and uh, the rest has turned into um, it's either carbon or um, ferrous oxides or uh, it could be carborundum which is uh, silicon uh, SiO4 I believe. Alright here's another one that would be considered uh, limestone and that is clearly not limestone, and here's what it looks like under the microscope. Hold on a second. Alright, here it is again. It's the same, classic same stuff. It's, they, they all have the same stuff. There it is right there. And, and that is fascia. So when you see that, you know that that's the fascia that's outside of, of a creature. And then inside is the, um, whatever is inside, the bone or whatnot. Now this is what's inside of that one. And there's red blood and the black. The black is, is the um, vein blood. And the redder stuff is the oxygenated blood. And I'm going to show you one. Uh, hold on a second. All right, this one here, here's the skin on the outside. All right. Same sort of stuff we have on all of them. Now, I'm going to roll it right around the skin. And now I'm going to go across to the side. There's the, where the skin is up there. And you go down through the depth of the skin. And now you're down into... Whoops. Let's get back up to the skin. Okay, there's the skin. And we're going to roll around the skin down into the tissue. What happens to the tissue? I've got to focus this in. It's tough. All right. This is the tissue as you roll from the skin into the tissue and that's called areolar tissue all right this is the skin tissue and you see those little uh, uh, black dots there those are the silicon and and the um, mineralization calcium and so forth that's embedded in the tissues of the skin the matrix of the skin and now I'm gonna roll this over and you're gonna see as the skin Okay, you see the layer of skin. Okay, you see it rolling all the way around here? Now, we're going to go all the way over to this side. And this is where the blood comes in that is the oxygenated blood, the red FeO3. Now, of course, it's, it's brown now and rusty colored, but that's where the, the, the good blood comes in. And it works its way through these little tiny vessels. And I'll come in closer in a minute and show you. But as it works its way across, it, it depletes the oxygen. So it starts out over on this side with the FeO3, which is the three oxygen blood. And as it works its way over, everybody starts taking oxygens. And by the time it gets to this side, it's black FeO2. And that's the, the second side of it. And then it gets sucked back up into the... Um, uh, you know, cardiopulmonary, the, the, the uh, lungs, and it gets oxygenated again. That's the way it works. Now, let me see if I can get a little closer with this. Now, this always gets a little tricky. Uh, 
hold on, I'll try to get right up close so you can see all the porosity. All right, there it is now. This is kind of hard to do uh, quickly, but there's all the little porosity. And uh, let me get to the real black looking stuff. You see it? There's the vein blood. Now this is fully understood, and you can see that that's where it is now. It's, it's where it first started over here. It's it's um, redder. You see, and that means it's got um, more oxygen in there. So that's the way that works. And and the, the, the all tissues get fed that way. All right, that's a, a, a rock, which is literally a piece of meat that is uh, petrified, and that is what you see there, that little flap that comes across here, that's what's called the um, a, a fascial investment, a facial flap, and, and, and it's seen in, in um, autopsies all the time. Now, this rock has all of the articulation of, of meat, and it even has the black elastin fibers that run through meat, uh, which can be seen here. You see that little squiggly black elastin fibers that run in through there? Those are, are fully understood, and all of the different articulations of meat is here. And this is what this is, is a piece of meat. And the, the stuff that's on the outside, that white stuff, is fascia. And the fascia, see it? That holds to the tendons and it also separates everything in your body that's why they separate out this this is a chunk of meat that literally broke off on the end anyway that's what that is all right now this is a bone and um, here let me just show you what it looks like it's uh, it's broken of course and uh, that's the head of the bone and I'll show that under a microscope and that's what's left from the inside of the bone and I'm going to show that right now in the microscope now that right there is the inside of the bone alright and it's it's transitioning into um, into just totally stone now this up in here is also part of the bone and then you come out to the fleshy area it surrounds the core of the bone I believe this is more like the marrow area and the spongy part of the bone it is now um, let me see if I can home in on it It's transitioning off. Take this out. Well, I don't care about that. Anyway, and you can see this is the same fascist stuff that coats everything. And that's why everything separates out on its own. And that's what uh, that's how this thing works. Now the you see a clear separation between one layer of the hard calcified outside bone and then you get to the inside spongy bone and that's where you see your black and everything is in there and, and that's what's turning into um, hydrocarbons and so forth and that will eventually leach out of here uh, as it sublimates out under different temperatures and pressures and that's in the, in the um, petroleum industry they call this kind of stuff source rock and that's how it, it gases off um, as it, it literally almost like boiling off of the vol volatile organic compounds is exactly what it is actually under temperature and pressure and time and that stuff will all turn into um, biogases